Welcome to our channel Learning Math. In this video, we're going to solve polynomials and geometric questions for official exam 2019 second session. In addition to some extra parts, as you see, that are very important for grade 9. Now, let's start. We have OABD is a rectangle so that OA equals 5 and AB equals 3. We also have a circle C of center O passing through the point A. The line BD intersects this circle at the points M and N, as you see here. It intersects the circle at M and N. What is the nature of triangle ONA? Then show that NA is the bisector of the angle BNO. Whenever we have points on the circle, we should keep in mind something which is very important. First of all, we have radii of the same circle that are equal, and we also have angles inscribed facing diameter equal to 90 degrees. If you note, we can say that ON equals OA radii of the same circle, then triangle ONA is isosceles at O. Before moving to any other part, we should analyze and conclude from our proof. We have just said it's an isosceles triangle. Can't we say that we have base angles that are equal? So the angle ONA is equal to the angle OAN. Now we want to prove that NA bisects the angle ONB. When we talk about bisector, we should prove that it cuts the angle into two equal parts. How to prove them? We have just said that the angle ONA equals OAN. Now, how to continue? We have reached to this angle. If you note here, we have a rectangle. We should analyze all parts of the given. Can't we say that the opposite sides of the rectangle are parallel to each other? So here we can say that OA is parallel to BD. But we have B, M, D, and N are collinear. So OA is parallel to B, N. Now, can't we say that we have... Uh, corresponding and alternating angles when we have parallel. If you note here the shape that we have alternating angles, now we can say that the angle O N, sorry O A, N is equal to the angle A N B. Now we can uh, deduce that these two angles are equal, so N A is the bisector to the angle O N B. Show that D N equals four and calculate B N. How to prove that? If you know something, we have just said that we have points that are collinear. Can't we say here that we have an angle, all of it 180 degrees? So the complement of this angle, which is 90 degrees as angle of rectangle, is also 90 degrees. We can say then we have here a right triangle, OD and is a right triangle, right angled at T. Now we can apply Pythagoras theorem. But as you see here, we have only the length of ON, which is 5. How to find the length of DN? OD is missing. But what does OD represent? Isn't it a side of this rectangle? Can't we say that the opposite sides of the rectangle are equal? So OD is equal to AB equals 3. Now we can apply Pythagoras theorem in this triangle to calculate the length of DN. So we can say, applying Pythagoras theorem, since it's right triangle, sure whatever was the missing side, we start by the hypotenuse facing the 90 degrees. So ON square equals OD square plus DN square. Now we just replace each side by, each, uh, by its value here, 5 square equals 3 square plus DN square. Now we just calculate them, 25 equals 9 plus DN square. Here we can find d n square we just move 9 to the other side of the equation the sign of 9 is a plus when we have no sign in front of it it's a plus when we move it it will become the opposite which is minus so 25 minus 9 equals d n square now we can say that d n square equals 16. well we have found d n square but we want the length of d n can't we say that dn equals a plus or minus radical 16? To remove the square, we put plus or minus radical. Sure, here minus is rejected since we are talking about length. Then dn is radical 16, which is 4 square, so it's 4. Then we can say that dn equals 4. Now, how to find the length of bn? 
If you know something, B and can be divided into two parts. It's B, D plus D and. We have D and is 4. What about B, D? Can't we say that the opposite sides of the rectangle are equal? Here we have OA equals 5, then B, D is 5. Now we can say that B and is 5 plus 4, so it's 9. The two lines NA and OD intersect at L. Now we should join NA that will cut OD at L. Also we have NO intersects the circle C at E. When we join NO and produce it, it will cut the circle at a point E. Show that D is the midpoint of M and and deduce that BE equals 6. Well, here as you see, we have joined NA to cut OD at L, and now we are going to produce NO to cut the circle at E. Whenever we have point on the circle, we should keep in mind angle inscribed facing diameter is 90 degrees. We have produced an O which is radius. It cuts the uh, circle at a point E, so we have the diameter and E. If you note, we have the points E, M, and N are on the circle C. And we have NE is the diameter, then we can say that EM and salient is 90 degrees angle inscribed facing diameter. Well, why are we talking about it? Whenever they ask us to prove a midpoint, we should keep in mind the converse of midpoint theorem. Something which is very important. To apply converse of midpoint theorem, we should think about lines that are parallel to each other and one of them is issued from the midpoint of a side in a triangle. If you know something, we have O is the midpoint of an E. In triangle NME, if we prove that OD is parallel to ME, then we can say that D will be the midpoint of ME. Well, how to prove them parallel? We have perpendicular on the first side. It's a right angle, angle of rectangle. When we prove this one is right angle, we can say that OD is parallel to ME. They are perpendicular on the same line, which is ME. Now we can apply the converse of midpoint theorem. O is the midpoint of NE in this triangle, ME and. So we can say that it will cut MN at its midpoint D. Now we can say that DN equals DM equals 4. We can also say that OD is parallel to ME and equals its half. We have just said that OD is 3 opposite sides of rectangle are equal. Now we can say that ME is double OD, so it's 3 times 2, it's 6. Well, here we want to find the length of DL and the length of N A, then we're going to prove that B N times O L will be 50. How to do it? Whenever we have parallel lines, we should keep in mind that we can apply Thales theorem. If you see, we have B A is parallel to O D. They are perpendicular on the same line M N. Here we have an angle 90 degrees given an angle of rectangle. Well, we have two lines that are parallel. They are cut by transversals, then we can apply Thales theorem. Here we can say that ND over NB equals NL over NA equals also DL over BA. We can apply it since we have intersecting transversals. They are intersecting at N. Now we just replace each side by its value. We have ND equal 4 and we have just proved that NB is 9. So we replace it, 4 over 9 equals NL over NA, we copy them the same. DL we also don't have its value while BA is 3. Now in order to find the value of DL, we use its, uh, the ratio containing DL and the other ratio containing the numbers. Here we can solve them by cross multiplication to find the length of DL which is 4 over 3. Something which is very important. If we want to find the length of an L, here we don't have an A, but we can find it. If you note that an A is the hypotenuse in this right triangle, when we apply Pythagoras theorem, since we have BA is 3 and the length of an B is 9, by applying Pythagoras theorem, we will get an A equals 3 radical 10. 
When we replace an A by its value and solve the, two, uh, the first two ratios, similarly, we will get an L equals 4 radical 10 over 3. Now, how to find OL and how to find BN times OL? If you know that OD is 3, all of it, and we have just proved that DL is 4 over 9. Can't we say that OL is OD minus DL this part? So it's a 3 minus 4 over 3. We solve it. It will become 5 over 3. Now BN times LO. We have just proved that BN is 9. The length of BN is 9. We replace it by 9. LO we have just proved that it's 5 over 3. Now we can multiply them times. We can simplify. We will get it 3. Now 3 times 5 is 50. Another extra part which is very important. ED intersects MO at G. We have ED and MO will intersect at the point G. And NG will cut ME at K. Show that K is the midpoint of ME. How to prove it? This is very important. Before solving any part, in such case, we should analyze the given. What are the given sides representing? ED. If you know that ED is issued from the vertex of this triangle towards D, which is the midpoint of M, and we have just proved that it's the midpoint. So here we have median. Also, MO is issued from the vertex M towards the midpoint O of N, E. So we have another median. These two medians, Sorry, these two medians intersect at G. Then G will be the centroid of this triangle. Now, N, G, if you note, N is, N, G is issued from the vertex N towards the centroid G. So, this will be the third median. Sure, it will cut M, E at its midpoint K. Then K is the midpoint of M, E. This is very important. Now, the perpendicular through A to O, B intersects the circle C at F. Show that BF is tangent to this circle. From A, we have drawn the perpendicular to OB that cuts the circle at F. Another point on the circle, radii of the same circle are equal. So we can say that OA equals OF radii of the same circle. Now to prove that BF is tangent to this circle, we should prove it perpendicular to the radius OF. So we need to verify that the angle OFB is 90 degrees. If you know something, we have just deduced that OA equals OF. The two equal sides are issued from the same vertex O. Can't we say that we have equidistant? Then O belongs to the perpendicular bisector to AF. But O belongs to the perpendicular OB to AF. Then OB itself is the perpendicular bisector to AF. Now can't we deduce that BA equals BF equidistant? Here, if we take the triangles O, A, B, and O, F, B, if you note we have O, A equal O, F, and B, A equal B, F, we also have O, B is a common side. Then these triangles are congruent by side, side, side. But here we have 90 degrees, the angle O, A, B, which should be equal to the angle O, F, B as homologous angles. Then the angle OFB is also 90 degrees. Here we can deduce that BF is tangent to the circle at F. Now let's start by polynomials. As you see here, we have ABC is a right triangle at A such that AB is 6 and AC is 8. We have that M is a point on AB such that BM equals x, another point n on ac such that an equals also x. Well, let us be the area of the triangle abc and s prime, the area of the triangle am, and sure we should keep in mind the condition 0 less than x less than 6. Let's start analyzing the given. Here is the triangle we have bm equal x and ab is 6, sure x should be between 0 and 6. Also we have AN equals BM equals X. We have given also that AB is 8. Now let's analyze the given together. If you know something, we have AC is 8. 
and a n is x. Can't we say that the remaining part is 8 minus x? So n c is 8 minus x. The same here. We have a b is 6 and b m is x. Can't we say that the remaining part a m is 6 minus x? In order to solve correctly, we should first of all analyze the given. Now here is the triangle AMN and the area S is the area of the triangle ABC. Let's solve it together. Sure, we know that the area of a triangle is base times height over 2. Here is a right triangle. Can't we say that AC can be the base and AB is the height? So it's base times height over 2, 8 times 6 over 2, when we simplify, we get 4 times 6, which is 24. Now, what about the second part? They are asking us to find AM. We have just found it by analyzing the given as 6 minus x. We can just write AM is AB all the side minus BM. So, it's 6 minus x. Now, let's calculate together the area S prime of the triangle a m n. We should verify that it's equal to 6x minus x square over 2. If you know something, the triangle A m n is also right at a. Its area is base times height over 2. We can consider A n as the base and A m as the height. It's relative perpendicular. So s prime equals base times height over 2 x into 6 minus x over 2. We can here expand x times 6, 6x minus x times x, x squared over 2. Now we should expand 3 into x minus 2 into x minus 4. If you know something, when we want to expand 3 or more terms, we should multiply each uh, any two together and then multiply their answer by the third. Here we will expand x minus 2 into x minus 4 and then multiply the answer by 3. We want to prove it equal 3x square minus 18x plus 24. Keep in mind, when we multiply them, our answer should be 3x square minus 18x plus 24, as if they are telling us the answer to check it out. Now, let's start expanding. We have x times x, x square. Sure, we copy 3. We open the parentheses. Since we are multiplying only the last two terms, to multiply them then by 3. Here, x times minus 4 plus times minus minus 4 times x is 4x now we multiply also 2 by these terms so minus times plus minus 2 times x 2x now minus 2 times minus 4 minus times minus plus 2 times 4 is 8 here we should solve what's between parentheses then we multiply the answer by 3 if you know something, x square can never be solved, neither with x nor with number, as if we are having a blue, green, and black pants. We cannot say that they are all blue or green or black. So x square is completely different from x and from the number 8. x square, we don't have any x square to solve it with, so we copy it the same. Now minus 4x minus 2x is minus 6x. Uh, same sign, we add them and put their sign. Plus 8, we just copy it. Here we can also multiply 3 times x square is 3x square. 3 times minus 6x plus times minus minus 3 times 6, 18x. We copy it. Now 3 times 8 is 24. Sure, plus times plus is plus. In part B, we need to uh, calculate x so that s equals 6x prime. We have just proved that s is 24. And s prime is 6x minus x square over 2. We just copy them the same. Sure, here we copy 6 times s prime. Now we can simplify 6 by 2. It will give us 3. We are simplifying since we have times. So 24 equals 3 into 6x minus x square. Now we can multiply 3 times 6, 18. And 3 times x square, sure, is a 3x square. To solve it, we should group them on one side. So we move minus 3x square on the first side. It becomes a plus 3x square. 
and here plus 18x it will become minus 18x here we will have nothing so it will be 0 sure plus 24 we copy it the same now we want to solve it equal 0 to solve equal 0 we should use the factorized form instead of factorizing it we should note that in part a we have just proved 3x square minus 18x plus 24 is equal to 3 into x minus 2 into x minus 4. So we should just use it and copy the answer here 3 into x minus 2 into x minus 4 equals 0. Here we have a product equals 0 then one of these terms is 0. Sure 3 is completely different from 0 then either x minus 2 is 0 or x minus 4 is 0. We solve them then x equal 2 or x equal 4. When they ask us to calculate x in such questions, we should keep in mind the given condition, which is here 0 less than x less than 6. If you know something, 2 and 4 are both available, so they are both accepted. Now show that s prime minus 9 over 2 equals minus 1 over 2 x minus 3 all square to prove them we should solve s prime minus 9 over 2 s prime we have proved is equal to 6 x minus x square over 2 minus 9 over 2 same denominator so it's 6 x minus x square minus 9 all over 2 now we can just order them from the highest to the lowest power so x square then x then number we keep on the sign for each one here it's minus x square plus 6x minus 9 we order them in this way now we can take minus as common since it's in front of x when we take minus at, as common we open parentheses to see what's remaining note that here we minus we have taken it as common then what remains for us x square now plus isn't it minus times minus we have taken minus what remained for us minus 6x we copy it here minus isn't it minus times the plus we have taken minus as common what remained for us plus 9 we copy it another way you can directly when we take minus common reverse all the signs here minus became plus x square plus became minus 6x and here minus became plus 9 if you know something x square minus 6x plus 9 as if it's a square minus 2ab plus b square so it's a minus b all square then it's x minus 3 all square minus x minus 3 all square over 2 as if it's minus 1 over 2 x minus 3 all square now to understand more how did we factorize this one we can say a square equal x square then a is x b square is 9 which is 3 square then b equals 3 here we want to check up if it's in the middle 2ab 2ab is 2 times x times 3 gives us 6x if you note it's the same answer now we can say it's a square minus 2ab plus b square so it's a minus b all square then x minus 3 all square sure it's minus since here we have it minus Finally, they are asking us, deduce that the area of triangle AMN is less than or equal 9 over 2. If you know something, the area of the triangle AMN, which is S prime, to deduce we should uh, conclude from the previous part. The area of AMN is S prime, less than or equal to 9 over 2. Here, we have it minus 9 over 2. So we should solve this one. If you note that here minus gives us negative. x minus 3 all square is positive and 2 is positive. Then here minus 1 over 2 x minus 3 all square is negative. So s prime minus 9 over 2 is negative. Now we can just move 9 over 2 to the other side. Sure, minus becomes plus. Now we can say that s prime is less than or equal 9 over 2. So the area of the triangle AMN is less than or equal 9 over 2. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.